Hello, my name is Erin and today I'll be discussing risks arising from invasive species in Australia and how they can be managed. For this presentation, I've chosen to focus on Bidu bush, which is a highly invasive species that is prominent along the coastline of New South Wales and on the central coast where I live. To illustrate the extent of this invasive species and the risks it poses to the environment, I'll be taking you on a walk from my backyard through the bush to the beach. Before we begin our bush walk today, I would like to acknowledge the dark and young people who are the traditional custodians of this land. I pay my respects to the elders, past, present and emerging. I also would like to extend this respect to all Indigenous people who are listening to this presentation today. An invasive species is a species that establishes beyond its accepted normal distribution, causing substantial damage to the environment. In Australia specifically, there are many species which have been introduced since colonisation that have rapidly become invasive. Invasive weeds are one of the most serious risks threatening Australia. Specifically, these invasive weeds rapidly invade disturbed sites and compete with native plants for space, nutrients and sunlight. Worryingly, this invasion can result in the extinction of native plant species, which in turn alters the habitat of native animals, such as these galahs. Bitter bush is considered one of the worst weeds in Australia due to its invasiveness and potential to spread, which is obvious by the sprawling shrub behind me. Those of you who live near the coast would recognise this plant immediately. This is because bitter bush occupies up to 80% of the coastline of New South Wales. It is unknown when or how bitter bush was first introduced in Australia. However, from 1946 to 1968, it was planted deliberately along the coastline of New South Wales in an attempt to control erosion and promote rehabilitation in dunes after sand mining. Since then, bitter bush has continued to spread rapidly in coastal areas. is a perennial evergreen shrub that can grow up to six meters high and two meters wide. It has the ability to grow in a range of environments from open exposed dunes to shaded forest which we'll see as we continue on our bush walk. Unlike other invasive weeds, bitter bush is distinguishable by its green oval shaped leaves, its yellow clustered flowers and small green berries which turn black as the plant matures. Each berry on the bitter bush contains one seed. Bitterbush is able to invade coastal areas rapidly due to its vigorous growth and prolific seed production. In fact, one plant can produce more than 50,000 seeds a year alone. These seeds can be easily spread, for example by animals who digest the berries and can germinate at any time of the year without disturbance. that bitterbush poses to the Australian environment are so severe that it has been listed as a key threatening process to biodiversity in New South Wales and as a weed of national significance. Specifically, bitterbush substantially threatens the native species in coastal areas it invades, which reduces the overall biodiversity of both flora and fauna. This reduction in biodiversity has the potential to alter ecosystem processes, such as nutrient cycling and disturbance regimes. Evidently, these alterations have substantial impacts on the environment. Bitterbush also poses social risk to the Australian environment as it reduces the aesthetic appeal of natural environments and reduces recreational access to beaches and along walking trails. This is evident at this point where I'm standing as this used to be a trail down to the beach, which is no longer accessible. The management of bitterbush is difficult due to the tolerance of the plant. It is capable of enduring shade, salinity, strong winds and drought. Frustratingly, bitterbush is even capable of re-sprouting after slashing, herbicide application and fire. As such, determining effective management strategies to control this invasive species is a challenge for environmental managers. Downey argues that management strategies should not aim to eradicate bitterbush, but rather to control this invasive weed strategically. This is because eradication of widespread weeds is resource intensive and rarely achievable. I chose to take you on a bushwalk to this beach as the extent of the problem becomes evident when you look at the sand dunes in front of me. There is bitter bush as far as you can see. Management strategies of bitter bush vary depending on whether or not the weed has invaded an area yet. The first priority is to keep uninfested areas clear 
However, if an infestation is established, preventing its spread into surrounding areas then becomes the priority. In New South Wales specifically, management strategies to control bitter bush include the slashing and removal of plants, the application and spraying of herbicides, introduction of insects which attack the seeds, the use of fire to destroy plants and allowing cattle to graze on the plant. The effectiveness of these management strategies varies depending on the extent and the location of the invasion. It is thought that in order to effectively control bitter bush and to limit re-emergence, a combination of these management strategies must be used over an extended period of time. This is especially important in areas such as this beach, due to the extent of the infestation. In all, the management of bitter bush is the responsibility of landholders, land managers, local communities, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander groups, governments and individuals. If these stakeholders continue to work together to implement a combination of management strategies that succeed in controlling the bitter bush, this will help to reduce the risk this invasive species poses to the environment. Thank you for joining me on my bushwalk today.